everyone, Brian from Cider Mag here, back with another episode of Line by Line, Cider Mag TV's in-depth look at the best songwriters around our music scene. Today we have a very special episode planned, welcoming four exceptional musicians and songwriters into the studio together as they close in on a very special performance happening this month at Tupelo Music Hall in White River Junction. Please welcome our guests for today, appearing August 30th at Tupelo in a show being called Songwriters Playing Each Other's Songs. From Rick Reddington and the Love, Rick Reddington. From Joey Leone and the Chop Shop, Joey Leone. From both Perfect Trainwreck and Holy Plow, both there. And from the Tony Lee Thomas band, Tony Lee Thomas. All right, welcome to Line by Line. We welcome Rick Reddington, Tony Lee Thomas, both there, and Joey Leone to the set. Thank you for joining me, guys. Yes. We're going to start off, we're going to dive right into the August 30th uh, Songwriters Showcase that you guys are all involved in at Tupelo Music Hall in White River Junction. Uh, Joey, the original idea was, was yours, the, the, the mastermind behind it. Um, why did you come up with the idea and uh, why did you choose these three guys to join you on stage? Well, the idea I, I was stimulated by uh, something that I had seen was... was um, George Harrison playing with uh, Paul Simon on the old Saturday Night Live and also a video that recently had surfaced with uh, James Taylor and uh, Carol King playing at the Troubadour back in the 70s. It was kind of just this idea of them playing each other's songs and the respect that they had given each other and, and I was just working on a record of my own original material and these are guys, the three guys that I looked up to the most as guys who were playing original material and I figured selfishly the best way to, to, to do something like this was to get the three best guys that I could find um, who, who would work together and guys I already have a relationship with and guys I knew would you know, stimulate the music with each other and, and would be cool working with each other. So uh, who, was the first, uh, who was the first phone call once you had the idea? You know, <laughs> the funny thing is I, you, I, you mentioned that the last time we spoke, but I don't remember exactly. It was, it was all within two minutes. So I don't know if Bo was first or Rick was first, but they were all within two minutes of each other. And then Tony was an afterthought, of course. Um, <laughs> no, no, Tony actually was, was a guy who I had thought of, um, but I, I, I thought of Tony later on because we have a, we're, we're a little bit closer, you know, friendship-wise, and I knew that if I asked him, he couldn't say no. I was concerned whether Bo or Rick would be A, interested in doing it, or be available. Tony, I knew I could muscle him. I knew I could just, I, I, could, I could threaten him with personal, you know, not grievous bodily harm, but I, I could just say I was not going to be his friend anymore, and I was going to take my ball and go home. <laughs> so basically that was, that was it. So Tony, but Tony's a guy, obviously, I thought would add some good looks to this, uh, to this, to this thing, too. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a good-looking young man, and I, I thought that we might need it for venues such as this. So for those of you who don't know, the, the uh, premise behind the show is that each of them are going to be playing uh, a portion, or not a portion, oh, that's wrong, edit, edit, edit. Uh, yeah, for those of you that don't know how this show is going to work out, each of them will be playing each other's songs throughout the night, uh, as well as a couple solo performances by each performer as well. Um, so Rick, from Rick Reddington and the Love, you get the phone call and say, um, here's my idea, this is what I'm interested in doing, I want to put it together, are you in? Uh, what was your first thought? Uh, I thought it sounded great, actually, any time um, that we get to have Joey sit in with us, you know, he's an amazing guitar player, so it always sort of ups the ante for us. I'm actually been a fan of Bo's stuff for a while, and we kind of run in parallel paths. Tony and I have kind of been working in the same venues, but don't really get a chance to see each other. He's been at Killington the past couple of years, and I had sort of taken a break from Killington. And I know that Tony was one of the uh, um, sort of unusual people who came into the ski area and kind of started playing some original music as well, which you don't really see a lot of. So, so to me, it sort of it made good sense, you know, for the four of us to sit and play. And Bo, when you got the got the call, how did you feel about the idea, and, and why did you want to get involved? Well, I wouldn't know how much I was going to make, first of all. <laughs> I don't know, Joey always was good about paying, paying people, so... Yeah, it's fully just, you know, for the money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way... <laughs> oh, yeah. 
<laughs> but just take a check. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll be getting the 1099. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. No, it's, it's, uh, it just sounded like a great idea, you know, to um, get four cats that uh, kind of each know each other and play in the area and, and to do it at a venue that um, is a proper listening venue, get us out of the bars into a place where people could really sit down and listen to our tunes and, and see how it gels, you know? And, uh, yeah, it's a great idea. So I was like, I'm in. So the, the three obvious, I mean, uh, you know, with Rick, Bo, and yourself, Joey, uh, being central Vermont musicians and playing the Vermont New Hampshire circuit very heavily, enter Tony Lee Thomas from Massachusetts. Um, so what did you think when, when you got the call and were asked to participate in this? What were your thoughts on it? I looked at the calendar, you know, and uh, I had a really busy night that night bagging groceries. <laughs> I figured maybe I could talk to the manager, get a couple hours to ride up to Vermont. I mean, you know, was I worried about Joey taking his bat and ball and going home? Not so much as the grievous bodily harm. <laughs> Uh, I mean, come on, who would want to play with these three guys? Yeah. So, you guys, you know, it, the decision gets made and, the, and the, the lineup is decided on, and we know we're going to Tupelo and White River Junction, which is a great room. Um, how did you guys go about choosing the songs that not only are you going to perform solo, but choosing the songs that you're basically giving up to the group and saying, here's my material? And uh, how do you go about choosing the songs, Rick? Um, for starters, I think, you know, I. I tried to choose something that was pretty easy for us all to just, you know, hang on and have fun with. Maybe, I, I, I think we each brought a couple in that will, that'll be a little tricky for us on some levels, but I, I picked, uh, you know, on, on certain things I definitely could hear um, Bo, Bo's banjo style, you know what I mean? Certain things I definitely could hear Joey playing, you know, leads on. Um, so, I don't know, I just kind of picked the four tunes that I thought would gel with what these other guys were going to bring to the plate, you know what I mean? Okay. So we all sounded like we were in the same church or whatever. <laughs> you know? Tony, how would you go about choosing the songs that you're going to perform that night? I, I kind of wanted to think about it that way as far as what would fit, but we didn't really, you would have to be the last guy, you know, like, if I were to look at it like making an album, like how is this all going to fit together, all of our tunes? You would have to be the last guy to know what the other three tunes were. So then it was just kind of a question of, uh, I don't know, what, uh, what songs would be best for three other band leaders to do and what's, what skills are we bringing to the table? Everybody's a multi-instrumentalist, everybody's a vocalist. So I tried to pick the ones that I thought would be best suited for vocal harmony because that's my favorite thing. Bo being the, the banjo man of the group, um, which <laughs> definitely might bring a little bit of a challenge when you're going to choose the songs because most of your stuff is based around the banjo. How did, uh, how did you choose the songs that, that are going to be implemented that night? Well, to be honest, I haven't quite made up my mind yet what I'm going to choose, but uh, the one that we were definitely I, uh, have chosen is, is an easy one chord song, so we can't really screw it up. <laughs> and it's fun to play, and it's kind of creepy and bluesy, and and um, you know, it's and it's made me hundreds of dollars, like I said, hundreds yes. all about the money. <laughs> and um, but yeah, I it, I don't plan on playing banjo all night long. Um, I'm not really that good of a banjo player, but I do use it to write write the songs. Uh, so it's 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 my tool. Um, but yeah, like you know, pretty much what Rick and Tony said, just uh, something that's gonna be fun to play and. Something I could hear these guys playing along with. Uh, I could definitely hear, you know, some of, of uh, Rick's cigar box <laughs> guitar yeah. playing on that. I love that stuff, and of course, Joey could play anything. And um, we're going to get the young stud up on bass, too, right? We're gonna... <laughs> if you guys don't kick me out yeah, on stage, I'll hang out. So we'll get, we'll get Tony thumping along the bass, and uh, yeah, I. I'm zeroing in. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll consult the wife. Maybe she'll know what to. What to do. <laughs> Joey, how did you go about choosing what, what you're gonna uh, put in the repertoire? I I thought of, I, I mean I definitely thought like the other guys did that definitely songs that were gonna uh, exemplify the versatility of the musicians involved obviously but I think there was also an element of you know when I think of Bo as a banjo player I don't think of him as like you know, like a Johnny Hartford type banjo player or like a traditional, he's like an idea songwriting kind of a banjo player. So it's not like I didn't pick a song that there would be like 32 bars of him taking a solo. I kind of thought of him as an ensemble player 
playing my song, adding something to <laughs> what I'm saying, adding something to it, an element that would make it a unique experience. I think the you know the the, the thing that we'd all love to walk away from this is with versions of our songs that were performed that night, that we took something from that and either added it to our show or just added it to the, to, you know, to the mosaic of the music that we make. Like there was a night that I played with these other cats and there was a version of one of my songs. You know, someday if, if, if these songs become you know, known to the, to the public, they will seek these things out on YouTube and go, yeah, there was that one song that Rick did. I always was a big fan of his. I've seen him do it. But there's that night he played with Bo, Joey, and Tony. That version of it had to... And there's always a nervous element that happens when you get musicians together. Out of that mutual respect slash fear mm -hmm. that happens where guys are like, I don't want to mess this up, which stimulates some really good thoughtful playing. Is that a... Is that a I wonder if that resonates through the whole group. Is it, you know, the part of getting this phone call and this idea, which is definitely different than revolving around the bar scene or playing the same typical venues that you become accustomed to. Was it a challenge? Is there a challenge there to say like, yeah, not only do we think we can do this, but we're going to pull it off and make it incredibly unique and, and a different show than people are used to seeing around here. Yeah, I, like I, I had said when we were doing the interview for, for, the, for the magazine, we were, I can refer to that, of course, right? Um, uh, how, you know, we play a lot of gigs, you know, we don't play a lot of shows. We don't always get a chance to play a lot of shows. And like Bo was talking about it being a listening venue and us, you know, showcasing the material and taking the time at least a couple of months out to, to, to think about it ahead of time and sort of even put the energy into telling our friend, everybody networking amongst their own fans, you know what I mean? Because honestly, July and August really does become sort of the busiest time for us if we're out touring with our music, you know what I mean? So to even try it right now was was a little bit crazy because everybody's so busy. But I think that um, that overall we knew that it was it was gonna work out. You know? So let's dive into the song. Start with uh, Rick Reddington's song "Sweet Life." Uh, my first exposure to "Sweet Life" was on YouTube with your son Ben, who was uh, maybe ten or eleven in the video. I think in the, he was about eight, actually. Oh, I knew he looked a lot <laughs> younger than he is now, so. Maybe nine. I think he was about nine, nine in that video. We shot it, basically shot that in our in our cellar where he had started playing and it was, um, you know, simple enough song. There was just a few notes for him to, to play bass on. So that was one, that's kind of how he started playing bass and we shot that clip together. So why don't you tell me a little bit about the song and <laughs> what inspired it, how you wrote it? Well, it was like, um, I had the chords for a while, actually, just these kind of same three droning chords that go over and over again, and I knew that I was going <clears> to, <throat> you know, put something good in there, you know, that the words would come. 